geography is always going to be an absolutely central part of this. If data is attached to a map, it becomes much more powerful and it becomes a different living thing. Advancements in technology will help all countries be able to conduct censuses in ways very similar to the United States. This is about us coming together as a country, standing up, being counted, so that for the next 10 years, their voice will be heard. The decennial census is the largest mobilization of resources that the government does outside of going to war. We get a full count every 10 years. Those counts help with people's representation in Congress. They also help disperse more than $675 billion in federal funding, which go towards new roads, hospital services, things that we all depend on. Welcome to our class overview on the 2020 census. We estimate that in just a few weeks, we're going to have to count 330 million people, at least, living in more than 140 million housing units. The needs of the, the government to efficiently count the population led to a number of technological innovations over the decades. The census was the first large government operation to use punch cards to tabulate the results of the census. I think one of the key developments in GIS between 2010 and 2020 is we've been able to move away from paper-based operations in 2010 to solely digital operations. It's enabled us to have a digital transformation for the 2020 census. It became very clear that maps could play a much more important role, so we're investing in a number of these different web mapping applications. In order to do the census, we first need to understand where they all live and then go count them in their housing units. Traditionally, we hired about 150,000 people to walk around every block in the nation, validating our address list and maps. We have single family housing units, multi-family housing units, large apartment buildings, and then we have less traditional housing. This decade, we used aerial and satellite imagery we have analysts who look at images of neighborhoods in two points in time using different satellite images to detect change. When our analysts are conducting a review block by block in Barca, they can use what we call pins to identify minimal, moderate, or significant growth. Where we do detect change, then we send people to canvas those neighborhoods on foot. This has allowed us to reduce the number of offices we have in the field. In the past, we hired hundreds of thousands of people to do this work. But this decade, 150 people helped validate 65% of the housing stock on the nation. get people to self-respond, we'll be printing 1.5 billion questionnaires, letters, postcards to reach out to folks to have them go online and respond on paper or over the phone. One of the most difficult groups to count is young children in a complex housing situation. Immigrant groups are typically harder to count as are young adults, college students, prisoners, their participation is absolutely fundamental to their community getting its fair share. Community events will be held across the country, at churches, at mosques, schools, street fairs. We'll have census staff, community leaders there trying to get people to respond. The Response Outreach Area Mapper is identifying areas of predicted non-response. The interactivity of the application allows us to see in a simple pop-up window what the socioeconomic and demographics of a particular area are, including the age of the residents, income, poverty status, 
the languages spoken in the home. So we're able to tailor our outreach plans for particular areas. In the past, we would have to have geographers printing the maps that our managers could use. This decade, we're able to put this information online, and so community leaders, partners, even people sitting at home can access the information. For those that don't self-report to the census, we'll have to visit about 50 million housing units. This decade, instead of using paper and pencil, the enumerator will be using a smartphone. They're routed in an efficient route to make sure that we're visiting households when someone's most likely to be there. And they log their hours and their mileage on the phone. Hello, I'm Daniel Gonzalez. I'm here with the U.S. Census Bureau. They'll ask 10 questions, and then the data will be transmitted to headquarters. With the advancement of dashboards, I'm able to see all of this information online in a visual format that's much easier to understand. This has helped us streamline our operations significantly, leading to a reduction in our infrastructure by half. We've definitely made a lot of strides forward in modernizing our mapping at the Census Bureau. The technology's allowed us to do the census more accurately, more easily, but also to save lots of time and money. Maps and other visualizations are also great ways to provide information while maintaining the, the confidentiality of the underlying data. Advancements have helped us move from having specially trained geographers conducting work using GIS to really making it user-friendly. And I think what this means is that from another country or a small local government perspective or businesses large and small, these tools are within your reach. Collaboration can help us all improve. Over 100 countries are now working together at the United Nations to share techniques, talk about how we're collecting geographic information, and plan for our future. At the end of the day, the decennial census is really about people. We're not living in a world of limitless resources. And if we're able to direct our resources responsibly, that's an incredibly powerful thing.